Last night, NASCAR made a huge change to the All-Star Race that got many people excited for the July 15th event. However, they also made a change to the All-Star Race that got many people all riled up. Yo, what is up everyone? My name is Jeff from MDK and welcome back to the episode of Inside the Lines. I guess this is more of a part two from our episode last night. If you guys haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend you do so. Be a little card up there on the top right of your screen to talk about the change that NASCAR did to its all-star race by moving the July 15th race that was originally supposed to take place at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and has moved it to the 0.5 mile track Thunder Valley known as the Bristol Motor Speedway. Now that alone got everyone excited, all you know, jacked up, you know, short track racing under the lights for a million bucks. I mean, what could be better? Unfortunately, the hours after that, NASCAR also made a change that got many people, and I mean many people, around social media, Twitter, Instagram, whatever social media platform you were on, a lot of fans were, did not like this change. And this change revolves around the number placement of cars. So, let's take a look. Here's a picture of a normal NASCAR Cup Series car. The no car number is located on the center of the sides of the car with the sponsor located on top of the rear wheels. Well, this is what the cars were, are going to look like when NASCAR goes for the All-Star Race on July 15th. The sponsor is then going to be moved from the top of the rear wheels to now the center to a bit to the left right next to the front wheels with the number slid a bit to the back near the rear wheel so basically you have a sponsor then a number right next to it all in the center on the side of the car now this was only after an update because originally a tweet from adam stern showed that they were going to put the, the uh, numbers on the rear quarter panel, similar to this, on a K&N car driven by Harrison Burton, or the NASCAR Pinty series and how they run their cars. They run their cars on the rear corner panel where the numbers are. So, and that even got Dale Nard Jr. tweeting about like, no, do not do this. Then NASCAR updated it, or I don't know if it was as a result of the backlash or they already planned it, but they decided to, to move it just a bit, slightly bit to the right near the rear wheels and put the sponsor next to it on the left side. And let me tell you, when I say that not many people liked it, I really mean very few liked this change. I put out a Twitter poll, uh, still 17 hours left at the time of this recording, but just to give you an idea of it, 80 people have voted on it. 89% of it prefer the door instead of the rear quarter panel or even next to it. So. That gives you an idea that not a lot of people are for this change. Now, with the number being a bit slightly to the right, hopefully it'll still keep its number size if you know they don't affect how big the number size will be. Then I'm pretty sure more people will be okay with this. I'm personally all right with this change. I'm not a fan of the quarter panel, I'll never be. But I'm okay with uh, you know that style for one race. And <laughs> it got so bad to the point that Steve O'Donnell even had to come out with a tweet clarifying people that hey it's a one-time thing we're gonna test it out see if fans like it sponsors like it if they do great if not fine and y'all need to relax so yeah even steve o'donnell he asked for my people hey let's relax it's a one race deal which that would have been great if you would have said that if nascar would have come out and say something about it like you gotta clarify this stuff you know you can't just say oh okay we're oh, we're gonna be uh starting with the all-star race we're gonna be moving the car placement you have this. You can't just say that and not expect backlash or like, um, you know, giving up. They oh wait, it's just a one-time deal. You know, so people don't lose their minds. So, um, I'm personally okay with this. And to be quite honest, if they're gonna do it, why not do in the All-Star Race? It's a race for fun. And this is not the first time NASCAR has done an experiment with an All-Star event or done something to experiment how they race or how they do certain things to the All-Star Race. The latest one, go back to 2018. When they brought in this restrictor play package, I think it was 450 horsepower to the All-Star Race just to test it out. Eventually, that led to the 2019 package, but still, still, more than likely, um, I think fans are going to be okay with this, but just for a one-time thing, I don't think fans are going to be okay with seeing that for the remainder of the season and for years to come. I don't think that's something if fans want. I think fans are going to be okay if th with this if it's just a one-time thing but yeah m again my thoughts i'm okay with this for a one-time deal uh but now i want to turn the question on to you what are your thoughts on nascar making this change do you like it do you not would you want this to be not only for the all-star race would you want this style to be here for the future maybe when the next gen car comes into play in 2022 or you hate it you're done with it you don't want to see this outside the all-star race 
you know, one race deal. Again, all suggestions down below. But I also want to add this little nugget. So just a bit ago, I said that NASCAR is going to use the All-Star Race to test things out, to experiment things, to see if this change or this rule will help the racing product. Well, a tweet from Austin Dillon suggests that NASCAR could possibly add another experiment to how they run the All-Star Race. Last night, he tweeted this out. I'm hearing choose cone at Bristol Motor Speedway for the All-Star Race. Might be dreaming. I don't know. I'm tired. Now, it's very weird Austin Dillon would say something like that, but let's say more than likely we could see the choose cone rule being implemented for the all-star race now if you guys don't know what this choose cone rule is i believe this only takes place on the local short tracks i'm not sure if you know if the wayland modified series do does this or if you know whoever does this but the choose cone rule is basically pretty self-explanatory there's a cone and you can either go around the cone to go to the inside or it can go to the outside lane whenever there is a restart. The reason why many people um, have brought up this topic as of late is because certain tracks, the outside lane or the inside lane could be an unfair advantage. For example, you could have a great you know, pit stop, come out third, but you're gonna be on the inside lane. That inside lane could be at a disadvantage and you could lose three or four spots at the pro in the process. Drivers don't like that. They don't like that they're going to be punished for wherever position they're in. So many drivers and even some fans have been requesting a choose cone rule. Allow the drivers where to start. If they want to start on the outside lane, let them start on the outside lane. If they want to start on the inside lane, let them start on the inside lane. So you could have either still two by two or you could have a single file like uh, we see back in the old days uh, with single file restarts. You could have that. You could have one driver on the inside and 20 on the outside. You could have five on the inside and 15 on the outside. It, w it does create fun strategic moves, and I think it could help uh, spice up some interest throughout the race. And I won't be surprised, and actually I am for NASCAR implementing this just to test it out, to experiment with this at Bristol. Because Bristol is one of those tracks where which lane you're in depends on how good of a jump you get, or depends how good of a restart you get. Um, sometimes if you're on the outside lane, you can just fall like a rock. I think we saw that um, in the race at Bristol a few weeks ago, where if you're on the outside lane, you are not gonna get going. Compared to if you're on the inside lane, you got a good clean start. I think even at Charlotte also, it had a, uh, something similar to that effect, where the inside lane just, no, no, the outside lane, which just would not go. The inside lane was a preferred lane, and you saw drivers that were on the outside, lose a ton of spots. So um, I'm all for a choose cone rule. So I'm all for a choose cone rule, but now obviously I'm gonna pass the question off to you. Are you for a choose cone rule? Would you, are, would you be okay if NASCAR implemented this rule as an experiment for the all-star race and even so with future races? Or uh, are you in the same boat as you are with the side numbers rule? Um, if this gets implemented, have this be a one-time thing. Again, this is a very in opinionated episode of <laughs> Inside Lines where a lot of this stuff is going to be relying on you to come up with your own opinion. But that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Inside Lines. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment down below for more video suggestions. I do have a big announcement I want to be planning with this channel a bit later on in the week, so look out for that. But until next time, my name is Jed from MDK, and I'll see you guys next time.